This video will cover what osmosis is and how osmosis occurs in three easy steps. Number 1. Osmosis is a type of diffusion. Osmosis is the diffusion of water across a membrane. Water passing from the blood into the interstitial fluid is an example of osmosis. The rate of osmosis and the degree to which osmosis will occur is governed by concentration gradient, just like diffusion of other molecules. Water flows from an area of higher water concentration to an area of lower water concentration. However, in most instances of diffusion, the rate and likelihood that diffusion will occur is measured by measuring the concentration of the molecule that will undergo diffusion. For example, if the front end of the classroom has a concentration of 25 moles of perfume and the back end of the classroom has a concentration of 2 moles of perfume, it is reasonable to conclude the perfume molecules will diffuse toward the back of the classroom. With osmosis, the diffusion of water is measured the opposite way. Instead of measuring the concentration of water to determine if osmosis will occur, the amount of solution that is not water is measured to determine if osmosis will occur. For example, a beaker of pure water is connected through a pipe to a beaker of salt solution dissolved in water. Will osmosis occur? The answer is yes. The water will flow from the beaker with pure water into the beaker with the salt solution. How do we know? By checking which beaker has a lower concentration of water. If both beakers contain one liter, the beaker with the salt solution has less water in it than the beaker with pure water in it. The concentration of water was determined by measuring the concentration of what was not water in the solution. The beaker with the salt solution has a lower concentration of water. Therefore, water will flow from the pure water beaker into the salt water beaker. Will osmosis continue until all the water from the pure water beaker has diffused into the salt water beaker? No. Remember, diffusion continues so long as there is a concentration gradient. Once enough water has diffused into the salt water beaker, that there are equal amounts of water in both beakers, water flow between the beakers will reach an equilibrium where there is no net movement of water into the salt water beaker. This does not mean no movement of water between beakers occurs at all, but that at equilibrium, water flow from one beaker is no greater than water flow to the other beaker. What if the amount of salt in the salt water container were suddenly increased? What would happen to the flow of water? Diffusion of water would increase from the pure water beaker into the salt water beaker. What if both beakers contain salt water solutions? Water would diffuse into the beaker with the higher salt concentration meaning the beaker with the lower water concentration. A simpler way of stating this is that water will flow into the solution that has the higher osmolarity. Osmolarity is defined as the number of moles of osmotically active particles per liter of solution and is measured in units of osmoles per liter, OSM per L. Osmotically active particles are the particles in the solution that are not water. Put another way, osmolarity is the molarity of anything in the solution that is not water. For example, if a solution contained 2 moles of potassium ions and 3 moles of glucose, the osmolarity would be 5 osmoles per liter. If 4 moles of calcium ions were added to the same solution, the osmolarity would increase to 9 osmoles per liter. Number 2. Osmotic gradient can determine the rate of osmosis. An osmotic gradient is a concentration gradient of osmotically active substances. This means if concentrations of molecules that are not water are higher in one area than another area, water will diffuse to where the concentration of non-water molecules is the greatest. The particles in the solution that are not water establish an osmotic gradient. Remember, water diffuses from areas of higher water concentration to areas of lower water concentration. Water travels from an area of lower osmolarity to an area of higher osmolarity. This is because the higher the osmolarity is in a solution, the lower the concentration of water in the solution. The lower the osmolarity is in a solution, the higher the concentration of water in the solution. Therefore, an osmotic gradient exists when there is a higher concentration of non-water molecules in one solution compared to another where it is possible for water to flow into either solution. Put another way, if there is an uneven concentration between solutions of non-water particles, there is an osmotic gradient. What is noticeable about this difference is diffusion is often described as a molecule traveling down the concentration gradient. 
In the case of water, an osmotic gradient is measured by the concentration of what is not water, as opposed to the concentration of water itself. Therefore, water travels up an osmotic gradient, which also means water is traveling down the concentration gradient. Number 3. Osmotic pressure can demonstrate the direction in which osmosis will proceed. Water exerts a pressure on the walls of its container, whether that container be a cell membrane, a blood vessel, or a beaker. The pressure water exerts is known as osmotic pressure. When water diffuses into a vessel, the osmotic pressure has increased, and there is now a greater concentration of water inside the vessel than before the osmosis had occurred. How much water will diffuse into a vessel is regulated by the concentration of particles in solution that are not water. Therefore, the higher the concentration of particles that are not water in a solution, the greater the osmotic pressure in the solution is, as this will lead to the greater diffusion of water into the vessel. This is often spoken of as if the particles in solution that are not water are exerting a certain pull on the water to draw the water into the solution. The greater the osmotic pressure, meaning the greater the particles of solution that are not water, the greater this pull on the water will be, and the more water will diffuse into the vessel. Therefore, osmotic pressure can be viewed as a measure of how much osmosis will take place due to how many particles in a solution are not water. It is important to point out Osmolarity and osmotic pressure are both measures of the particles of solution that are not water. However, they are referring to different concepts. Osmolarity is referring to the number of moles in solution, and osmotic pressure is referring to the effect the particles that are not water in the solution will have on the water. The greater the osmotic pressure is, the more osmosis will occur. For example, if a solution has an osmolarity of 6 osmoles per liter, and another solution has an osmolarity of 20 osmoles per liter, the solution that is at 20 osmoles per liter exerts a greater osmotic pressure than the other solution. Since there is greater osmotic pressure in the solution of 20 osmoles per liter, more water will diffuse into the solution than the solution that is 6 osmoles per liter. Remember that diffusion, including osmosis, only occurs as a result of a difference in concentration. The greater the difference in concentration, the more diffusion will occur. After osmosis has occurred to the point that a concentration gradient no longer exists, osmosis technically still occurs, as water is still moving about the solution or solutions. However, if no concentration gradient exists anywhere, osmosis will occur evenly in all directions. No one direction will have a greater rate of osmosis than another and there is no difference in water concentration to increase the rate of osmosis in any one direction. It is also necessary to point out, in chemistry, osmotic pressure is often referring to how much pressure must be exerted on a fluid to stop osmosis from occurring when working with water in a laboratory setting. This does not happen in cells, and while accurate in chemistry, this definition of osmotic pressure is not relevant to human physiology. Thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe to our channel.